Green Party here in Sweden, they came up with this brilliant thing. They want water to be more expensive. And I have good news about puppet globalist politicians not doing very well. Stefan, go det bra? Ja, det, det går bra. Tack, <laughs> tack så mycket. Ja, varsågod. Yeah, yeah, I love your Swedish. It's very good. Ah, you are very kind. To be honest, I speak more uh, in in my past. I spoke more Norwegian than Swedish, so I probably get the two a bit confused. But you, it's a little bit like English and Scottish. We can understand each other. Yeah, and I think it's the same in Scandinavia, right? Yeah, between Norway and Sweden, it's we we understand each other pretty pretty well. Yeah. Yes, and what a absolutely beautiful, stunning part of the world you live in. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Wonderful people, although not maybe not all of them awake. Not all of them. Well, there's there's quite a few of them are awake actually in Sweden, but uh, not uh, many enough. Not enough. Yes. Of course. And we were just talking about alkaline uh, alkalinity, or pe- I shouldn't call it alkaline diet because people think you mean being alkaline, which is probably going to get you just as sick as being acidic. But <laughs> talk, we were talking pH levels, friends. That we're all living organisms have a have a natural pH um, balance, and uh, yeah, it's not something that's talked about, is it, Stefan? It's not. It's not like a well known thing. No, uh, I can actually tell you a story about this. Uh, you know, I got a uh, bad stomach ache back in 2008. And I, then I started to study this stuff. And I don't know uh, anything like you do, but I, I did understand this thing about acidity and that you have to do something about it. So I started eating uh, broccoli and spinach just like you told me now, yeah. And I was doing, you know, I put spinach in a in a pot with water and I boiled it and I drank the water. I was doing this stuff and uh, it cured me totally. And I haven't been, I haven't had any problems since then. Mm. So it uh, it's abs- absolutely true what you are saying. Of course, I mean, you should know. Yes, when I'm kind of life coaching people, I, I kind of start with trying to get individuals to understand that everything we've been taught, I mean like everything, not like some bits, or, everything is a lie. It's, it's all, every, the, the whole matrix, as I call it, is founded on a, it's just founded on lies, you know. Our education's a lie. Our our food industry's a lie. Our medical industry's a lie. Um, financial, our, you know, the banking systems, <laughs> a lie. Um, you know, the, the 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 media is is by definition, it's a I don't know if it's necessarily a lie or just just a version of the of the truth and it's not a version of the truth that suits people like you and i would, would you agree yeah i agree with you yeah this is how it is yes and it's a fascinating journey when you start to realize that okay so this was a lie and then you then you look further and you find all right this was a lie too and yeah, and it goes back. It uh, and it becomes very basic. I mean, the lies are some of the lies that you see that I found are so basic, like um, uh, how what work should look like, uh, what a life should be like. Uh, you know, these very basic things are programmed in a way that. People think, okay, so this is how it should be, right? And uh, it was based on a lie. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I agree. Yes, massively. And um, 
probably like yourself on your YouTube channel, Stefan, Sanity for Sweden, Friends at Home. Um, you probably understand we can't say too much about the last couple of years, but when you understand it all, you have a completely different take on it all. And when you see what they've been doing to the children in schools, it's, it's nothing. Sh it's, well, I mean, it is criminal that I think a lot of people have worked that one out. But to see teachers in education that, that, you know, they're putting this hand sanitizer on the children four times a day, uh, it, it, it's just so stupid. <laughs> Sorry, folks, I can't, I can't, you know, it goes against every, it just, it goes against everything we would, you know, we would had drummed into us as, as kids is like, get dirty, you know, eat a bit of dirt. It's good. You know, mix with people that are ill. It's that's, you know, this is what your body needs to thrive and, uh, and, and, and survive. And when you see now, it, it's like everyone thinks if, if you kill every single bacteria on the planet, then that's a good thing. <laughs> it, it's 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 uh yeah i talked to my father about this you know my father was brought up as a farmer's son together with uh, 11 siblings right? and he was uh, working with the cows and the horses and pigs and and uh, and he just bought this whole thing Oh, by the way, I'm not posting this video on YouTube. I don't know if you are. So I've, I feel okay to just say what I want. Uh, I will be posting it on Rumble. So, yeah. Yeah, I, what, whatever. I, I'll, uh, we normally post to YouTube. We, I, I think I'm one of the very few truth channels that's left. Oh, yeah? following what's what's been going on like there were some wonderful channels um amazing polly she was great yeah. um uh i mean even D D david ike is you know he was one of the first to go and and it was simply because some of these platforms i'm saying no names they just have they have a set of rules and they're they're quite in that respect they're quite fair because if you don't break them, then you don't lose your platform, right? So we just developed a way of speaking that didn't uh, is kind of abstract, but everybody knows what what like what you're talking about, and that, that's why we <laughs> that's why we're still here. Uh, All right. Uh, so I understand. So yeah. I will try to to fit into this. So I was talking to my dad, and he's uh, he totally bought this this whole thing. And we were discussing this, and I was so surprised about this because. And then I asked him about his childhood, right? And I asked him, I mean, what happened? You got sick, right? And you, but you were pretty pretty healthy, weren't you, right? And then you had a pretty good life, didn't you? And I talked about the immune system and, you know, getting dirty and meeting people and, and this all this stuff, and it was like. It was like I saw that he remembered this, you see? But then I saw how he just flicked over to the narrative and thought, no, 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 no. I have to isolate, you know. I'm, I'm telling people to wear the diaper and everything and you know, taking this thing is the best thing I can do. But there was a... There was a moment, a brief moment, where he was actually thinking and remembering this thing about uh, uh, getting involved with other people, and that this could be a good thing. And this, this is how he was raised. You know? So yeah. he had this knowledge already, but he just forgot about it. Uh, I was very uh, surprised, and it was tragic to, to see this. Yeah, the conditioning is um, very strong, you know, mm -hmm. very strong. We saw it 
we saw it during and subsequently since, uh, can we say, certain events that may or may not have taken place in uh, America 20 years ago, with things falling out the sky, you know, it, 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 the, the conditioning is strong. And I guess I'll ask you this question then, Stefan, what, what is it that makes people see it when, when so many, you, you, you know, I, I mean, personally, I've got quite an inquiring mind, but I can recognize that there was a time in my life that I, I would have just gone along with a narrative. You know, I mean, I was in the military, so that's a, a, a great example how you just don't question. You, you, it's not that you don't question it. It's like you don't know to question it because <laughs> that's just just the narrative, right? And obviously it kind of work, works quite well if, you, uh, if you're controlling the military. But I think I took such a kick in the teeth uh, through addiction So I like really crashed bad. And when I was down there and I looked around and there was nobody about, you know, then I kind of just started to understand life isn't what you think it is. It's not this great, fair, kind thing with wonderful people that are going to come and help you. And, you know, it's, it's, it's not that. And it's a lot of hypocrisy, et cetera, et cetera. That, that was like my first awakening. But it still wasn't for another uh, seven years. And I was, I was studying youth work at university, and my lecturer said to me, he said, Chris, have you seen this video about the Pentagon? It's like, you know, I'm not going to say anything more, folks, but you, you kind of can get what I'm talking about. And they, they were like, you know, it's like maybe not this thing, but it's more likely it would. And I went back. It was the early days of the Internet. It was the old dial up connection that made that weird, like weird screeching noise. And and I looked at this video and, it, you know, you, you'd have to be really brainwashed or really like not smart to not see what this guy was talking about it and i i think at that moment that was like my kind of oh my god we have been lied to haven't we we there's something but even then it was stefan it was probably another three years of trying to convince myself that that this was that this reality was true, that I wasn't, you know, making too much of this or, and, and it's difficult because you've got the power of the media trying to convince you that you're mad and that you, you know, that this is this and this is how it is. And, and um, there was one thing related to that scenario. I won't, I won't mention it again, but, but there, there was like what I call one smoking gun that you could not dispute. Unless you were just plain crazy, you could not dispute that this thing couldn't happen. That could not happen, right? It wasn't what what this person, you know, the, the media was saying. And and I I just clung on to that, and I I clung on to that long enough to then just keep doing background research and keep doing background research, and eventually it's 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 kind of brought me full scale to what I, what I think is enlightenment. I, you know, I, I, I think I get now how it all works um, and what, why we lied to. So my question to you, Stefan was, was that, was there anything in particular that, that got you, you know, that piqued your interest and got you to start looking at life in a different way? Yeah, yeah, there was actually a, a very clear moment when this happened. And I was uh, 20 years old, actually, and I, I was getting involved in the health, I mean, vitamins and minerals 
you know, in the in that business. Not not really hard, but I was into it at the time. And uh, and then there was a uh, something happened here in Sweden. That was uh, the they they wanted to regulate vitamins and minerals. And I totally understood this was destructive and evil. And I understood that they are doing it for profit. And I also saw how media was dealing with this. And it, uh, it brought me to real this realization that uh, media will actually say whatever they pay them to say. And these guys who are doing it, they are not doing it for, well, they are not really interested in your health they are just interested in your money and they are actually interested in you being sick so uh, i realized this when i was 20 uh, and and this just stayed with me so i i don't i don't think i ever trusted media for instance never and i think pe people in general they are uh, sort of gullible but you know I actually did an experiment once I was standing in line to pay groceries and there were you know they have these uh, billboards uh, you know these uh, papers they show the headlines right next to the cashier right? and there were two headlines <coughs> and um, one of them said something about rich people drinking blood, blah, blah, and so on. It was this terrible headline. And there was this guy standing in front of me, and I said, I want to know what he thinks about this. So I asked him, what do you think about this? Oh, I don't believe it, he said. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think people are a bit more aware than maybe we think uh, but uh, there, there is a situation and I think we are I, my me personally I have been realizing over time that people are not like me you know? we are different and I I thought everybody could see what I was seeing but they they didn't so then I was very happy just to find people who actually saw what I was seeing. And that I also found out that they, there are many of them, like you, yourself. So, But uh, it's been sort of uh, sad. This is a sad part of this thing, that, you know, realizing that people are not, they aren't really interested in this stuff. You know, they are interested in uh, what, what's going to happen next weekend or... Are they interested in the car or something? You no. Know, while we are interested in what's going on on the planet. So, yeah. Yeah, that's one thing I've noticed, Stefan, is, is people's long term remembering of things is, is, it's really bad. For example, I can remember what the sky was like when I was a child. You know, I can remember because I walked to school. I remember in the summer you looked up and you had this incredible blue sky, this deep, deep, deep blue, not a cloud in the sky. And that, that was summer, right? And we had, that was, you know, not every summer was as long as every other summer, but you, you had five or six weeks of this kind of weather and we had droughts and this, you know, water shortages, this sort of stuff. Like now it's, it's crazy that other adults, my age, they can't look at the sky and realize how different it is. And it's, I mean, today it's just really bad friends at home. If you don't know what we're talking about, you, for those that do like, God bless you. <laughs> um, for those that don't, it, it's, you know, they're messing with the skies and um, it's so obvious. But I think I said to you earlier, Stefan, you know, if you're not prepared to go out at six in the morning, look at the sky, see where the planes are, 
you know, look at the, the trails these planes leave across and then you got to go out at midday and then you go, ah, right, that trail there was from that. And, and then you go out at six o'clock at night, by which time the trail that was there, it's kind of drifted over here, but now it's, it's enormous. It's, you know, this huge, bizarre shaped cloud. Um, and I think, like you said, who's prepared to do that? Especially if they don't even really have a, like a care about what, what's, you know, like you said, they're thinking about like the football next week or something or, um, but it's crazy. It's, 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 uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a crazy world, huh? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, well, as I told you, I have not looked into this thing with the skies and, uh, I suppose it's different where you live, but because we, I don't see any of this here. Now I live in the countryside uh, in Sweden. Not many people live here, actually, where I live, uh, compared to other parts of Sweden. I don't know, but uh, we don't. I don't see it here. We we don't have this mm -hmm. situation that you are describing. So, and I haven't looked into it at all. Do I have you? friends. I have friends who are into it very much yeah. talk about it, but uh, no, I, I'm not that interested in this part. Maybe it's because I don't see the, well, it's not, it's not personal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, where I am, you can't help be, be interested because as, as I said earlier, you know, yeah. we, we don't have an airport here. We're not on any flight routes, not, not any, you know, And yet by, by six or seven in the morning, there's like nine airplanes in the sky at the same time. It's, you know, there's just no, there's no reason for it. So, and, and like I say, if it wasn't for the fact that, that the, the effect it has, then you wouldn't care, would you? You know, there's nine airplanes, who, who gives a shit, you know? But when, when it literally steals all your sunny days, um, Like I said, we've had a couple that uh, not not yesterday, but the two days before that were just two days of l luxury. The sky almost went back back blue again. Um, it it just makes you question what's going on and what I uh, yeah, and it makes you question what if you know what if they weren't going over? Would we all be burning to death because the, the, the I mean. The, the heat these last couple has been intense. It's been great. If you like to go outside in, in the garden and you, you like a bit of a suntan, it's, it's, it's brilliant, but it makes you wonder is, is that part of the reason? Uh, what's it doing to vitamin D levels to, to humanity as a whole? Um, there's a documentary out there. I, I encourage anybody to watch. It's called, Oh, I'll have to try and put the link below, but it's something like what's going on with the skies or, or, or something like this. And, and it was a, a guy that like really followed this and he went out to Hawaii where they've got the same thing and they've got trees that are now uh, dying. The bark, you can just like peel it off the trees because the, the soil is changing because particles in the air are, are, are don't quote me on this folks with like aluminium and stuff. And it's changing the pH level of the soil. And one of the reasons given is that, that this then forces farmers and uh, people who want to grow any kind of crops to have to go and get the gen genetically modified seed from these big, uh, you know, companies that m may begin with M. Um, so, I mean, it, that that's, kind of as much as I can and they call it cloud seeding and it is a thing it's not like it's just you know completely denied or anything there's conferences about it in America and stuff I just it's just a um, it's a massive unknown but it affects us so much here you know it affects us so much stuff and that's why I, I, I love the sun I love days without rain but we don't get that we have almost every day is like a it's 
almost every day is a cloudy day bar the odd you know little bit here and there so it, it you know it is a big thing it is a big thing um and it just amazes me how like even if you weren't into researching and stuff how can you not see it? but but i guess you just wouldn't you wouldn't figure that that plane that went by this morning has led to this this evening yeah i guess you just wouldn't wouldn't figure it but um right. how's the immigration in sweden then because that's been a big thing hasn't it is, yeah is it true in malmo that there's there's no go areas oh yeah yeah there's a the police have a list of no go areas in sweden or they call them uh, troubled areas or something yeah and there's 61 of them last time i checked it was 61 of them it's a list from the police uh, headquarters yeah 24 of them are serious really serious there are some areas of sweden uh, especially Stockholm, Malmö, Gothenburg, uh, where the police need escort if they are called in or the, the ambulance is called in, they need escort to make sure that they can actually perform their job. Mm. Yeah. So they don't so, get raped. <laughs> yeah, well, they get attacked. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the thing. I'm sorry, I'm I'm kind of making a joke, but it's also that Sweden is now known as the rape capital of Europe. Yeah, uh, uh, and anyone that's been in your wonderful country, as I have, you know, on and off for several years, will know the Swedish are the most beautiful, harmless people. The the crime rate. It's crazy in Sweden. In Sweden, folks, you go into a shop and it's like it's thousands of pounds worth of merchandise and there's not even like a security camera. <laughs> it's it's just people don't steal shit. It's it, it's because the sense of community is, is, is so strong. But, of course, that's being destroyed now. Yeah, it's um, been destroyed. You know, and uh, it's different now, and uh, especially in the, well, at least in the big cities. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the rape the rape statistics actually the rape thing was was one of the reasons why I started doing videos because I got so pissed off with this I I there's something with me I I feel like a knight, you know, when it comes to ladies. I feel protective. I w I want to help them. I want to you know protect them and it it bugs me when you know young women don't feel safe and they are attacked and it bugs me very very much and and i was i saw this rape statistic going up and i was reading the stories i heard about these stories and uh, and it pissed pissed me off so much and i think it was one of the main reasons why i started doing videos uh it was uh, it was, uh terrible stuff uh, Sweden used to be very, very, very safe. It was like ridiculous, you know. A lady could walk through Stockholm, no, no problem, at two o'clock in the morning, and she wouldn't be. That was wasn't there was no problems, you see. So, well, of course there were. Yeah, uh, things happened, of course, but. Relatively speaking, it was very, very safe. Yeah, I mean, my, uh, you know, my girlfriend was Swedish. She was working in a supermarket in Norway and the, um, I, th I think there were Sudan Sudanese migrants. Um, they came in with a machine gun. <laughs> and they just shoved it in her face. She was on the, t you know, the cash register, the till. And they say, give us all the money. And, and, and she's Swedish, so she doesn't understand. You know, she looks at them and says, why? <laughs> she didn't get, like, this is a robbery. Um, <laughs> uh, like, I totally get it. I totally get it. You know, you, 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 we, we've got, you, you've got individuals from cultures abroad that have never seen a woman naked, you know, ever 
like this just completely taboo and so they come to a country like sweden and they see these you know it's fair to say pretty beautiful women wearing what they like because it's a very liberal country and the the you know the message that's being received is not the message this i'm trying to be diplomatic here folks but um but uh do you feel like it's part of the agenda to destroy identity in Europe? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It was too good, you see. I think that's the problem. I think the, the people that we are dealing with here, the top globalist guys, uh, they, do, they, do just, they don't like it. People enjoying themselves, having a good time, feeling happy, free, you know, safe. It doesn't fit their agenda. So, yeah, it's a, and there's also, I think, a plan to sort of wipe, wipe us out. Yeah. That's, that's what I believe. I've been listening to the politicians here in Sweden of, and it's uh, absolutely ridiculous how they are facing the problem. How the problem is right there in their faces, and they can see it, but still they won't look at it. They just won't look at it. And if they are forced to talk about it, they will shift focus to something else and try to say that, you know, this is not the problem. Here's the problem, you know. We are going to solve this problem. It's not this one. And anyone can see that this is the problem. The problem started with mass immigration. And it will not stop until we deal with that part. Yeah, I mean, look what Canada's been through with that. With that puppet. Was he called Trudeau? Trudeau, yeah. Jeez, I mean... I would say what a country full of wimps just to put up with that idiot for for two years and let him do what he did to them and the truckers. But it's not just that country, is it? The whole world is just putting up with this stuff and going along with it. And um, on a positive, folks, a lot of people are waking up. And I think um, ultimately truth will prevail truth and light because you can't put that back in a box whereas the lies you you can expose you know once you start to get this and you start to see it um you can't not see it even though even though like me with uh my awakening it it can it can take a while um don't you think think it's fascinating how people like yourself you know and I was listening to this guy, this Scottish guy, Oliver. What's his name? Oliver. You know him? He's talking on GB News. Yeah. Uh, Neil. Oliver. Neil, Neil Oliver. Oliver. Yeah. Maybe. He used, yeah. He used to have a really popular television series here. Yeah. So I was listening to him just now, today. And he was talking. I think he's a brilliant guy. And he, he did his own research and came to his own conclusions and he came to the same conclusions. That's fascinating. You know, it's not like the, uh, the inf it's not like a program, you know, like uh, when you are educated, indoctrinated by society and the establishment is like a program, right? But these are uh, separate individuals doing their own personal research on what is going on. And they more or less end up with the same answers. Yeah. And that's, I think that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting. But what I will say there, um, and I'm not going to like comment on any individual, but for the last couple of years, we've had a lot of prominent speakers. And 
to the people in the alternative community, like the truth community, they 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 would probably think these individuals are like they're here, they're they're the good guys. They're here to set. It, the, the problem is, is that they're also they're all still supporting the narrative. They're just ch like challenging it in in a slight way, you know. Um. Again, Stefan, I can't say too much because of some of the platforms we video on. Perhaps we'll have to have this chat on our locals platform, and we can say what we what we want. Friends, if you can move over to our locals platform, it's free to subscribe. You can pay five pounds if you want to support the channel, and that's really appreciated. But you know, so we we can speak openly. I, we should probably have done that from the beginning, but. I've been speaking in code now for the last half hour, so let's continue. Um, but yeah, no, so many of the prominent speakers from the last two years, they all support a certain theory, a theory of health, or can we call it a model of health? It's not helpful, Stefan, you know? It's right. not It's not helpful. They sound like they're really against the system, but if, you know, if, if you're still preaching you know if you're still defending the fact that like black is white when no black is black then it's not you know it's not helpful um it does that make sense you know if you if you're not isolating the root court the actual truth in in whatever it is, the agenda, the, the incident, the whatever it might be in the media. If you, if you can't isolate the truth, then everything else is obfuscation. It's just confusing the issue. And what do the elites love? They love division, fear, control, confusion. Uh, and most of all, they love chaos. Um, so. Well, I don't, I don't know who these people are that you're talking about, but, couldn't it be like they are, they are on the path to more awakening, and on that path they can still, they still don't get the whole thing. Or do you think that they are uh, controlled? No, no, no. It, 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 exactly. They're not bad people. They're good people. Yeah. They just are not enlightened enough. Right. They, they, so they're by they're what in spiritual terms is what's called fourth dimension. So they're no longer let's just call it the matrix. You you get the matrix, right? You know, yeah. you believe everything you see on the TV, whatever. They, they they've realized that something's wrong, and so they've stepped out of the matrix. But rather than step to enlightenment, which is complete truth um, and understanding who you are, why you're here, uh, and, and you see the truth in like pretty much all things, you you get caught in this. Um, uh, I, I don't know if it's like a gestation period or it's kind of like you're in, you're in limbo. You're in this middle bit, and the reason it's referred to as fourth dimension is to try to make sense of the world. You go back into third dimension and you use all the brainwashed indoctrinated thinking that you've had since birth. So what, what we've seen in the last two years is some very great people who really want to do their best and, and tell people this is nonsense. Wake up like, you know, but what they've done is they've used all the apparatus apparatus of the matrix to try to explain. Well, uh, um, again, folks, sorry, I, I can't just speak openly, but you know, this is the life we've all we've all, <laughs> we've all accepted. But when you understand the nature of what has really gone on, you know, for the last couple of years you'll understand it's something completely different to what is being sold by the, let's just say pharmaceutical companies, medical companies, doctors, you know, that they're all schooled in a very certain way of thinking. Right. 
And if you're in that way, you're never going to understand what's really going. You're never going to know yourself, you know. They call it Gnosticism, don't they, in the, in biblical term. Gnosticism, know thyself. When you know yourself, then you know the universe. And when you're fourth dimension, but you can only make sense of the world by going back into the third dimension, then it's, it, I'm not saying it's like not, not helpful, but it's kind of not helpful. But, um, it, you know, the, the third dimension is the narrative of the psychopaths of the globalists it's what this is what they want you to keep believing and keep preaching and da, 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 you know um if i can try and think of an example stefan uh, uh it's like somebody like a banker that's woken up and realizes the whole banking system this fraction you know fractional reserve banking and intra he he realizes a big scam a massive lie on the people it's debt slavery right the whole, you know, it's like he realizes that and and he steps out of it. And then in order to help the people, he says, right, what you want to do, you want to buy these bits of paper from me and I'm going to put some numbers on them. And right, this is worth it. Do, do, do you get what I'm saying? He's using exactly the same system that he's trying to tell people. Is, ah, I think I know. I understand. Yeah. It, would, it would be helpful if you mentioned a name. Well, But okay, I'll, think, say, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. say a name. Antoine Beauchamp, folks. Ah, I see. You I all recognize. understand him, right? Most important that. And and your body's pH is, it's, it's everything is on there, right? You know? I see. You, I have an example of this. I think I understand what you're talking about because... We have this uh, comedian here in Sweden uh, who is very, very popular here in Sweden. And there was a point during this whole thing that happened during the last two and a half years where he started to speak up yeah, and said, no, this is wrong. You know? uh, no, you can't do this. This is wrong, right? And I got very optimistic about this guy and I thought, wow, this guy is now maybe waking up. Maybe he will now help us, you know, help people understand what is happening. And he was walking on that road to truth, might, you might say, right? And then, then all of a sudden, he just shifted back. He just turned away again and went back to his, his old, Me, you know what I mean? Mm. And it was pathetic to see this. Uh, so I think I understand what you're talking about. If you, if you really want to help, then you have to go the all, all the way. Um, but some people are on the path and they haven't got it yet, uh, but you have to walk all the way if you really want to do something. Yeah. 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 Sorry for friends at home. If you're getting lost in all of this and I completely get it, like don't sit there freaking getting upset and criticizing the channel that we've asked, we're asking people to support us on locals so we can just have a conversation, but I can't have a great guest like Stefan on my show and then do it on locals where we've got a hundred people when we've got, 70,000 on, on, on YouTube. Do you, you understand? This is like two hours of Stefan's time, two hours of my time, plus we've a, a, an hour of communicating in, 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 we have to pay our bills. <laughs> like ev, ev, everybody, I think a lot of, do you get this Stefan? People think you should work for free. If you like, you get this a lot, you know, why is there adverts on the video? Why do you think there's adverts? Because like I've got a, <laughs> family to feed. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah. Uh, I don't get that. Um, no, I'm retired. So, and yeah, so I'm fine, but I totally understand. Yeah. Yeah. Some, yeah, people, sorry, have, some people have, you know, I, I, I love my viewers and, and I love to read the comments and the, all the support that I get. It's very, very few of them that are, 
that you are one that I'm sort of wondering what's going on here, you know. But most of them are just fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I've met some great people through, um, you know, through my writing, but also uh, through the the videos. Um, really nice. Some of them support, like go above and beyond to support me. Um, send money to the channel, and we like we couldn't do with you know couldn't couldn't do this without them. So big thank you to you all. Um, what what do we think about the transgender agenda then stefan is that it is it okay for like should men if you decide to be a woman one day are you then allowed to enter the women's olympics <laughs> the women's <laughs> events in the olympics i should say yeah and no <laughs> you know i think actually i've been talking a lot about this on my channel uh you know, I think this is uh, possibly the thing where we can push them back. You know, this is where people are reacting and say, now you've gone too far with this. We don't want to see these big guys competing against the ladies. You know, this is stupid. So I think, it's, uh, I think it's an opportunity for us to draw the line and stop them right there and push them back from there. Yeah. Because it's, uh, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. They, they are trying to make it logic, right? Oh, this guy, he wants to be a lady and he says that he's a lady. So he should compete against these other ladies. Of course, they are trying to make it sound logical. Uh, but it doesn't work. You know, it's so against the nature of what, how you feel as a human. And it's totally unfair, of course. No. I remember I, do, I did a story about this basketball player. I don't know. I can't remember his name now. I think it was in Minneapolis, possibly in the United States. And he identified as a lady. And he was a he was a former Marine, uh, oh, six, seven tall, right? Big guy, you know, with big arms and everything. He's a, he was a Navajo Indian, I think, originally. This big guy, you know, that you would actually be sort of intimidated by if you met him. Right. And he was playing basketball with the ladies. And there were pictures of this as they were standing beside the court during a timeout. And he was like so much taller than the, uh, the girls. And they were like looking up to him and they were talking. And it was, it was just stupid. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot go going on there. Um I was chatting about this in a podcast yesterday. So what are we seeing now? We're seeing a focus on identity. So focus on the individual. So that's ego, keeping people in their ego, as opposed to um, seeing, the, the, seeing the bigger picture. Division as in focusing on people's difference rather than focusing on our similarities, which is, you know, we've got much more similarities between us as human beings as we, as we have as like bits that stick out of our body or don't stick out as the case may be, or stick out when you don't want them to stick out. <laughs> work that, work that out folks. Um, but yes, uh, but moreover, it's, 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 it's just, it's, again, order out of chaos, confu confusion. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a shame that we can't uh, encourage people as well to love themselves for, you know, for what you are and what, what you're born as and, 
and not feel that you have to conform to any particular sort of gender stereotype. Um, is this uh, been a big thing in Sweden, Stefan? Have you had these, like these uh, drag drag queens in schools and, and this kind of thing? Uh, funny enough, we we don't have this thing here. I, I don't. I haven't seen it. Uh, I don't see it as a problem in Sweden, really. So, uh, fortunately, we, we don't have this problem. It's, it could be that I just don't know about it. But uh, I think if there was a problem here, I would have heard about it uh, and I would talk about it. But the stories that I've been covering are usually from you know New Zealand, uh, Australia, Canada, United States. Well, that's where it's the worst. I th that's what I believe. Well. Yeah, it gets a disproportion. This is the other thing: the disproportionate amount of airtime. So it's like always. You, you'd think, you'd think if I went out my front door here, I'm going to meet the first ten people I'm going to meet. Like six of them are going to be transvestites or some you know that that's the the way the media and and yet let's be honest it's incredibly rare yeah that you rare. meet you you know you meet someone with a gender identity thing going on um folks at home we're not judging people here or whatever but people dress up be who they want people want to change parts of their body i really wish they wouldn't but but that's individual choice and if i was born in a different time a different place maybe it would be me that's not the issue the issue is disproportionate it's getting like thrust um thrust on people as though like this is just like a massively a massively normal thing and the, the confusion it must cause for young people who are not at an age where they can make sense of themselves because it takes a lifetime to do that. It takes a lifetime to understand yourself and where you are sexually or, or genderally. <laughs> um, and the fact now that this is just shoved on children, um, that, I mean, there's like parents putting their 10-year-olds ten year up for gender reassignment surgery it, 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 it it's just criminal <laughs> it's cr what if that child gets to like 14 and suddenly thinks no actually i really am a boy or one of i want to be a boy or a girl or whatever the case and 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 yet they've been placed on tablets and hormone tablets or or they've had surgery or what it's just ah it's insane yeah, it is. It's disgusting. I remember uh, listening to an interview with this young woman who regretted the transformation that she did when she was young. And she said one thing that st sticks to my mind. And she said uh, she was told when she, I think she was 12 years old, she heard this, she was told this, that if you are listening to a recording of yourself, you hear your voice on a recorder, you know, and you don't like your voice. This may be a sign that you are in that you that you should change your gen gender. Can you did you ever hear anything like this stupid? I remember when I heard my voice the first time. Oh, is this me? That sounds weird, you know. <laughs> It yeah, takes some I'd... time to get used to it. No, I don't sound like that, do I? That's not me, right? So that kind of, uh, that's insanity is was what they are feeding to the kids. It's, I think it's a uh, criminal, mm. of course, should be stopped. Yeah. And without, like I keep saying, without going into de too much detail, but, how did Sweden react to the last 24 months? Because 
you kind of shunned a lot of the severe measures like the lockdowns and stuff. Did, was everyone still wearing, I call it wearing your underpants on your face. Yeah. Because it's that re- utterly ridiculous that you think that's, this, this is the thing I was trying to say that I couldn't say is when you understand the nature of health, you'll, you'll understand why like, you'd never be doing any of that stuff <laughs> right instead you'd be eating vegetables and taking moderate exercise having a cold shower every day if if you know as long as you can bear at least it's it's there's much better ways is what i'm trying to say much you know that actually have grounding in science not as opposed to like grounding in cnn or or whatever the case may be yeah. But yeah, were, 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 were people like going along with it? Were people angry that Sweden wasn't doing what the rest of the world was? How, how so, was it? Some were, yeah. It was a big difference between the cities and, and the countryside. Uh, and I, I was talking about this the other day, actually, uh, with a friend. And where I, where I live, uh, it was very hard to find people wearing this underpants on their faces it was hard to find them there were very very few so and still the authorities strongly recommended people to wear them and i was very happy to see this people people didn't buy it they didn't want it and uh in the city it was different it was like maybe maybe it was like uh, i don't know the numbers but it was different you know i went into stockholm at one point, and I saw that there were more people there wearing this diaper. Yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I also went to see my father in Stockholm. He was taken into hospital. This was during the time when it was really tough. You know, the the pressure from the authorities and from media was incredible. And everybody should wear the diaper, you know, uh, in in the hospital. And uh, uh, we came there to see my father, and they handed me and my girlfriend. We came and they handed us the diaper and this uh, visor. You know, this is what you should wear. And I didn't put them on, and my girlfriend did. And she was wearing it for maybe 30 seconds and then she took it off because she couldn't talk. You know, we can... <laughs> uh, and the, the nurse came back in and she saw that we weren't wearing, wearing the stuff and she didn't say anything. So I, I never wore it. I would never wear it. But I think in general, sweets are, well, they, are, they don't want it. They don't like it. No. What's it like in England? Ah, uh, it's it's kind of a mix. So, for example, you've still got people doing it now. Like you even still see people uh, sitting in a bus stop all on their own. Like there's nobody for you know, well, you're, you're maybe I'm running past or something. They're just quite happy to sit there with it, uh, in, in the shops now for every like 50 people, there's still two or three still, you know, I call it believe in a bogeyman. Um, back in the day, it, it, it was hard. My thing was like I didn't care if you if you if that's if you ascribe to that in life if you believe in you know let's be honest you're told that from birth that the this is how you get sick so you can't really blame people for for going along with it all but it was the people that understood that this wasn't helpful but they still did it knowing that you're just putting that shit onto your kids. You know, your kids are going to have to live with a completely 
um, you know, fictitious model of science for the rest of their lives. Th this had become the norm. You know, you had to go and say no to the teacher at school. Don't, we don't want you putting that stuff on our, my child's hands. It's fucking alcohol for fuck's sake. It's, I'm not, you know, it, 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 it is a chemical. Putting it on the kids four times a day, killing all the bacteria that's really good for you and all the stuff that's not, it's going to survive that shit anyway. Uh, it's just in, in crazy, crazy. Um, so that was what it was like. Personally, I never even owned one ever. Uh, I had to go for a cancer test. It's fine, folks. I didn't think I had cancer, but I had a lump, um, uh, and, you know, decided I, my doctor said I should go and get it checked out. It turned out to be absolutely nothing. But, you know, so I, I'm going for a test for cancer at the hospital. And they said, when you get here, you've got to wait outside in the car park. You've got to put this thing on. And then, like, we'll come and, you know, at your specific allocated time, we'll send someone out to get you. And I said, yeah, OK, but, you know, I'm. I won't be wearing that thing. She said, why not? I could have said I'm exempt. I could have been, but no, I just, just said like, I, I'm, I'm, I don't wear one. Sorry. Yeah. I'm not being selfish folks. It's like, I under, I, you know, I get what it's all about. There's no fucking way. I'm going to be part of the new world order agenda. That's enslaving the, 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 the two. If I wasn't a parent, I probably wouldn't give a shit. I mean, I still wouldn't do it. But, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a role model for crying out loud. You've got to defend children, not, not go along with this crazy stuff. So there I said to are. her, no, sorry, I, I, like I don't, you know. She went, what? She said, oh, well, you, you, you can't come for your treatment then. And I was like, okay, <laughs> you know. And she put the phone down and she said, something like, you know, so just wear it. And, and she put the so I went and of course I didn't wear it and f fucking nothing happened, <laughs> of course, because there's no, no actual. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that, that was, you know, that was how, I mean, I, I got, I got, I wouldn't say upset, but I had some serious conversation with people that I know they know better. And yet they were putting this thing on to go like for their shopping. And, and I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, and it just makes it, e it fuck off. It's not making it easier for the children. You know, it's, you, you're taking an easy way out because you're scared of like a, a 17 year old shelf stacker coming up to you in the supermarket and going, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it's essentially what it comes down to. Some somebody's gonna, no, you know, no, no disrespect to people that stack shells. I've I've done that, really enjoyed it. Um, but you know, you know, not this, not like they're gonna send you to prison for a hundred years or something. It's like someone who puts cans of tuna on a shelf, and they got too big a mouth, right? So you just right. turn around and I I did it lots of times. <laughs> Said. I got thrown out of free places. Really? I didn't mind, except I was with my kid for two of those times. Uh -huh. And um, it was fine. We left the shop and I said, son, this is what a legend looks like. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it, you know, yeah. fucking be it. You get anyone can be a coward, you know, easy to be a coward, isn't it? That's just like take. So that was my thing, Stefan. You know, it was people that knew better. And I, I'm pleased to say, like, I'm thinking of one person in particular that after I had that chat, I was, what the fuck did you bring children into this world just to be a gutless coward? Why? And they were like, oh, yeah, now you put it like, I'm like, yeah, exactly. That was it. Next time I went in the shop with them, the, the, the girl behind the counter went, and then and 
my friend turned around and went, because we don't wear them. <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> wow, that's great. Uh, I love it. I just love this. Stuff. Yeah, it's a new world order. You know, you're Ivy, you're Ivy, mm. like with it, or you're against that. You can't like have it both. You can't have it both ways, can you? You know. Right. Um, I totally agree with you. It's very easy to be a coward. Yeah. Yeah. My my, go my girlfriend was in uh, a hospital, uh, checking something during this time, and uh, when she came to the reception, she was hand this diaper. And she was waiting for a while. She didn't put it on. And then she was called and came into this uh, doctor's office, doctor's you know, room. And there were two doctors there, nurses. And she was to talk to them. And she came in without the diaper and she sat down and she said, I'm not wearing it. And they said, oh, well, that's fine. It's your choice. And they were both wearing it. Wearing it. And she said, for on my account, you don't have to wear it. She said, she told them. And you know what they did? They said, oh, good. <laughs> and they took them off, you know, relieved. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just terrorism, you know. People and they know, of course. These nurses, they know it's no good. They know it. Well, some of them do, some of them don't, you know, they, 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 this, this is again, friends at home. This is what I'm trying to say earlier, but I, but I can't say, you know, this is the, this is a red flag for all of us that we can't, we got no freedom of speech now. Well, um, uh, geez, I've been threatened to be thrown off all social uh, media. It's just, it's just stupid. Like I'm a harmless guy. You know? <laughs> I, I, I like one thing and it's called love. <laughs> and I'm I'm now I'm now I'm the you know enemy number one. <laughs> it's it, this is the this is the world we live in. But um what was I saying? Uh, can't remember. What a surprise. Um I can't remember, but I but I'm I, I'm I'm serious. When when I went for that cancer test, Stefan. If they had insisted, then I just wouldn't have gone. And if I died from, you know, if I died, which I wouldn't have done because I live quite a healthy lifestyle. But if I die, I, I die. I'm I, I'm not going to be a slave. Sorry. Just I, I, I literally would. I choose death over being a coward and any day of the week. Um. Yeah, it's a great place to be. It's a great way to live your life. It's just so easy, you know. It's like there's a decision. You, you know, you you go the way that you can look yourself in the mirror, and mm -hmm. I'm quite quite happy about that. Good, very, very good. You know, I I hear this from other people too. You know, they say this is uh, this is important, oh. and some people say, I I this is the hill. Where I will die, no. Yeah, they are willing to die for this, and I, uh, I applaud this. You know, not that I want people to die, but you know, th there is a line. No, this is where we draw the line. You, you are not pushing me over that line. No way. The and whole I, thing. I feel exactly the same. The, the, I mean, the the whole thing was so farcical can't think of the right word i mean i don't know if you had this in sweden stefan but we, we've got this situation here right where allegedly all these people are dying right you know in a fa hundreds of thousands certainly tens of thousands right but you looked out the window you like didn't actually see anyone but uh, according to the news right Incidentally, somebody put a freedom of information request to the government to say actually how many people did did die, right? Under the age of 16, it was like two people, <laughs> right? Mm. No, I'm I'm I've done two videos on it, right? You can put this freedom of him, right? Who died of that actual thing, right? Which Again, 
you know, if, if you want to believe in that stuff, that's that's up to you. But if you do believe, if that, if you do believe in that that theory, um, uh, it was like in the age group uh, thirty to fifty, four people. Right. This is what locked down the planet, the whole country. Right. Was that between the age of thirty and fifty, four people died. Folks, if you think this is, if this is like, you're like, what, what did, it's a free, I've done two videos on it. You can put a freedom of information request to find out how many people died from that thing that we were, right? We're talking what they call like non, um, co, co, comorbidity, all right? So, uh, you know, People that just died from the thing is what I'm saying. Like they weren't diabetic or asthma or heart do or what, 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 but it, 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 anyway, regardless of that, because we didn't know that and still people will probably gobsmack now, now that I've just said it. Right. But we didn't know that Stefan. But back at the time when these tens of thousands of people are all dying, um, what what were our nurses doing? They're making TikTok videos of dance routines. Like they thought they were the fucking kids from fame or something. You know, I don't know if you had that in Sweden, but... <laughs> I saw the video. <laughs> you know, and... and I, I made a social media post just, just about the fucking idiocracy of it not just the fact that they're wearing all the protective clothing that that we're paying for for this <laughs> this thing that they're wearing it all in these videos all thinking that they're like fucking michael jackson but the insanity of like if this was for real a you should all be working your asses off or being at home sleeping and you know watching netflix and and good effort to you but also, look, have some fucking respect for the families who've who've lost these tens of thousands of people. This is not how you behave. This is like it's like desperate, desperate celebrities, right? Or desperate to get like five minutes of being a celebrity. And you're not, you're a nurse. You work in a hospital, just and I'll put a social media post, and I, I I just literally posted one of those dance routines, and I put like a comment like, "Oh, that's right." I put, "Oh dear," that's all I put. Right, fucking hell! You'd think everyone was a Facebook Karen, <laughs> <laughs> right? I literally come under attack. All I put was, oh dear, right? You either get it, folks, or you don't. If you think that's like wonderful, then that's, you know, that's fine. We just got a very diff different take on life. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how is people around you reacting to you these days? Did you... Do you still have some some of the old friends, or did they all turn their backs on you? What happened? I think it made me reevaluate the concept of friendship, and I had an awakening there, I'd say, and it suddenly made me think. What? How the fuck did I ever think somebody who calls me conspiracy theorist was my friend? And and why did I want? Why 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 would I want them to be? And it was a uh, it was a release. It was uh, it was in light, lightning, Stefan. You know, and I I I looked at some people that I'd been like, you know 
quote unquote friends with for some of them for, for a long time. Some of them, like I got on really, really well with, but I just asked myself the question, like, I can't talk to you. You know, I literally as an adult, I'm 52 years old. I don't, I don't want to pretend that I'm friends with someone. I can't talk to you. You don't have to like understand what I'm saying. You don't have to buy into it. But like, I should be able to talk to you. And yet, you know, I had friends who literally, you just couldn't talk about life. And I want to talk about life. I've, you know, I've traveled the whole planet many times over. I, I love life. I, I, li- I think it's fascinating. I don't like being screwed over by the NWO. I, you know, I don't believe things just fall out the sky. Well, not, not for the reasons they're given, because I've got something called, inte- you know, a bit of intelligence. And yet, if you're calling me your friend and I can't talk to you about this, they can't even talk. You start the conversation. It's like, oh, oh, that's all that fucking stupid. It's and and it just made me realise that it, no malice whatsoever, Stefan. I will, I love these people. And I always will. I have nothing. But I just thought, like, I don't want to spend my time with you anymore. I'm sorry. You know, I I, I want stimulating, enlightened conversation. Um, I don't want to like be pretending that like I'm having a great time when I can't even talk about any adult stuff with you because you just, it, it, you know, fucks up your conditioning (laughs) and you get, so, uh, yeah, that was how it was. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's life though. I mean, that's life as a podcast host, you know, it's life being ex military. You, 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 there's no way you're, you know, the, you, you just, you're never going to please everyone. And why, why would you want to? I, I just try and please the people that, that get something out of it. But, but what I will say is I did like motivational videos pretty much every day. I try to do one every day and I did them through lockdown and I did a lot of podcasts and, and, I got so many messages saying, Chris, you saved my life during lockdown. I'm not bigging myself up here, Stefan. I, I probably should stop and think about that a bit more, really, and pat myself on the back. But, but I, I'm not that. I, I, I always just keep going through life. But, you know, if you think about that, well, I'm glad I saved your life. Um, and what what better result can I get? You know, why, why would I want to be anything different? Um, so, this is, sorry to say, Nancy, you're, you're saying how's other people react to me and it's, it, it's, you know, a difficult question to answer, but um, I, I, I think it was all a great... It, 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 even though the the horribleness of the whole two years, all of it, especially when you understand the the, the, the globalist agenda, that that I learned a lot through it, and I think a lot of good came out of it. How how about yourself? Well, I think it's quite similar. That's a great story. Thank you. Yeah, makes me think. Yeah, I had similar. I. I have always been interested in people. Very cur- I've been a curious man, basically. You know, when I go to parties or when I meet people, I'm, I always ask them questions you know, because I get curious about them. Uh, I'm more like interested in others than I try to be interesting myself. So I just, it, it always happens. I ask these questions. And some people say that when I'm at a social gathering, they always expect something to happen because I will ask this question that a lot of people wanted to ask, but nobody dared to ask this question. You see, 
and I'm I'm the one asking it. So this this is how I am as a person. And and then during these these last two and a half years, I noticed some a change with myself. That got me wor worried actually, and I'm I'm still concerned about it. it that I I lost interest in a lot of these people that I used to be interested in. I just totally lost interest in them when I realized that they were just obedient citizens doing what they are told, not questioning anything. And I, I was just looking at them and I said, you know, I'm not interested in this guy anymore. And I was, it got me worried uh, because I am not like that. But it's, it stayed with me too. So it's not that I got back to being interested. I just that's how it is now. I'm just not interested in them. And the funny thing is that I noticed is all that it was like uh, I was balancing it. I was I lost interest in this part of society, <laughs> and all this interest went over to all the other ones. So I became much more interested in people that were not like that. You know, they they did question things. Uh, they were not obedient citizens. They they didn't comply. So I became very interested in them instead. So it sort of shifted my whole interest focus in life. So this was a major change for me. Uh, and I also lost a lot of friends, of course, uh, so-called friends. And I totally agree with you. Why would I be interested in being a friend, having this person as a friend, if I can't talk to him? You know, it's a very good point that you make. You know, if I can't talk to you, why, you know, what's going to happen? Nothing, right? We can talk about uh, things that are safe only. Oh, that's not interesting. That's not. That's not a relationship. It's just something. It's just silly, isn't it? Yeah, massively. And I, I tell you another thing that, like, I, I, I wish people could understand is. So, I'm in the media. That's my job. You know, I, I'm a show host. I'm a writer. Um, I do some public speaking. I do some adventuring and some crazy stunts every, or at least one crazy stunt every year. And yeah, I've worked hard, Stefan, to get here. Yeah, it's not you. You know, you you're a content creator. It's not easy. It's it's consistent effort. It's a lot. I eighteen hour days was just normal for me for mo many years of my life. You know, sometimes 48 hours just just sat in front of here, writing, writing, writing. Yeah, I work, I work hard. But in addition, I, and, you know, I've lived, worked and traveled in 85 countries across all seven continents. I studied a master's degree level in the social sciences. I read six books, one of them an international bestseller. I've been to the depths of mental health, uh, illness, chronic addiction, and got myself back with no help, no medical help, no, no support groups, nothing, ju just me, right? I've backpacked through every single country in North, Central, and South America. I'm a qualified pilot. I'm a qualified skydiver. Uh, I'm an Antarctic explorer. I've uh, dived on icebergs in a, in a, in a Antarctic polar circle. I've taught chill, uh, street kids in Mozambique. I, uh, I, I've driven journalists to India and back, like I drove them on on a bus <laughs> to India and 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 and, and back. I, like I could go on, you know, I, I've got the Finland gave me a medal, right? They give me a medal. They may, they gave me the second level commendation of Finland 
given to me on the grounds of hum human generosity. Anyway, what I'm getting to is like I've I worked hard, and do you know what? I might actually have learned some stuff on on that journey that that possibly you haven't learned, right? No disrespect, but like you've worked the same job since you left school, or maybe you've had like two jobs, but you know, you you the furthest you traveled is Ibiza. I don't care. I fucking love Ibiza. I wish I was there now. But you know, let's be honest, that's like your horizon. And if I meet you, you like always talk about football. Okay. So when I put something on my social media, have the fucking respect that I'm feeding my fucking family by living my life. You know, I'm feeding my family. This is my job. I'm not putting stuff out because I want to, you know, this is not like my personal Facebook page, which you can call me a twat. I don't give a shit. You know, I, I don't use it because I hate it. <laughs> I hate I hate social media, to be honest, but as a person in the public, you, you have to have a profile, right? And it it's like, geez, you fucking donut. You're like attacking me on my business page because you know me like privately. You know, Imagine if I fucking walked into your place of work, went up to you in front of your boss and went, right, you, you don't know this. And you da, da, da. And last week when we were in that nightclub, you were saying this and da, da, da. it's like. It, it, intelligence is gone, Stefan. Idiocracy rules the day. Right? And I tell you what, I don't put up with it, right? If you've got that little respect for me and what I might actually know, because like your mates down the pub have taught you different, you fuck off. Sorry. Goodbye. I'll hit that button, you know, and I, 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 I it's, it's like it's not like I want to be like that or I'm an angry person or I'm a narcissist or an ego, you know, that I can't be argued. It's, it's like, dude, argue with me, but like do it in private. <laughs> this is my business. There's people out there that, that they they rely on people like me for information, information to keep them alive, to keep them focused, to keep them fit, to keep them on top of their health to keep their mental health, you know, and uh, sorry, I just went off on one there, Stefan, but it, it's, <laughs> you know, this, this two years has been, one person wrote to me, she said, since when did you turn into this horrible person that, that I never met when I met you at this party, right? So again, talking about my personal life, like on my on on my business page, right? Okay. And like I wanted to re reply reply to her. What happened to that horrible that <clears throat> that lovely little person that you knew? Is that lovely little person is currently running a hundred miles at my own expense, sleeping in a sleeping bag in the rain to raise money to save a little girl from cancer. That, that's what, you know, that was literally what I was doing when, when this person posted to my, uh, and it's, ah, uh, it's a funny old world, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a funny, old, it's, it's, it, it's just that degree of mentalness to go into someone's like place of work in this case, it's like my social media and, and fucking think that that's a fine way to, and, and to think that you no disrespect, like 
some people, if, you know, if I'm talking to a person that has been to a remote pollination island called, I don't know, Wapu Bopu, right? I have the respect to think that they probably know more about that than I do. Like, cause I've never fucking been there. I don't even know where it is. Mm. And yet this person's got their doctorate there. So like, maybe like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm really going to learn from this person. Oh no. On social media, it's the opposite. You don't have to know anything, right? I- except what you learn in, you know, from the mainstream media news and, oh, that qualifies you to be an expert on, on, no. Every, uh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I see. There we I go. We, we got all that out, so. Yeah, good. Yes. Uh, I, I was, when I, as you were talking about this, I, I thought about the friend of mine. It's a friend of my girlfriend, actually. And she's a friend of mine, too. She told, she was telling the story uh, the other day and uh, she had this people that she was seeing uh, female friends. She's a, she's a female and they were seeing, they were meeting, I think every once in, you know, every year, I think they had this thing that they were doing. Right. And uh, she is this lady, she's awake and her friends, her old friends, they are not. And they have been, uh, questioning her and she got some problems because of this and and then they were about to meet again as they do every year i think it's every year they meet and and she was thinking do i really want to meet these people no no we have we have a history and we had some good times but uh do i really want to and then she said something that i thought was quite interesting and that was the, the last year or two years, uh, she learned uh, to trust herself more. You know? And she paid more, less attention to what other people might think, other people might think of her. And she's sort of moving away from this idea that it's important what others might say about her. And instead, she's moving into trusting her instinct and trusting her own observations. So she's sort of finding herself in all of this. And I think that was beautiful. And uh, yeah, I really like that. Yeah, very much. I, 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 I think probably the. You remember what I was saying about the third dimension, the fourth and the fifth. Yeah. So many people the last couple of years, they found themselves in the fourth one, haven't they? Because they're saying, Chris, I can't wake my family up. And I'm like, it's not your job to. Why, why would you even try? You know, do you think someone could have woken you up by shaking you and going, whoa, 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 whoa. you know, you, you got to come to this in your own time. And, um, yeah, but all my friends, they, you know, they, they call me conspiracy. Um, and I would, they're not really your friends there, are they? <laughs> you know, but the, be- the beautiful thing now was, Stefan, is everyone met online. And then we went to uh, big meetings in London. You know, you call them rallies or protests, but I don't like that. But, yeah. You know, hundreds of that uh, a hundred thousand people all who you don't have to explain yourself they they get it you know but um they get it and i think it was uh yeah it was a good time i can imagine good 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 that something so positive can come out of um this wanton destruction <laughs> yeah I mean, a, f- a few people say this, and, and I agree with this. This is the, the most positive part of this whole insanity, is that uh, we are finding friends, and we are getting together, we are uniting, and we sort of... So, a, a guy told me, he says, 
No, he, he grew up with the family, of course, but he never felt really that he was, this was family. But now he found the family. Oh, when he was, when he meet, is meeting all these people at, and you can see it in, in their eyes, can't you? Uh, I can, me and my girlfriend, we were at this rally uh, some, a few weeks ago, we, and I was speaking there, and then I saw these people, and I saw it, you know, and they came over, and they talked, and, you, and th there's a connection that, it's an immediate connection, and you just like them, you know? Yeah. Instinctively, it's just, yeah, I like this person. I'm interested. I want to know more about this person. And it's strong. It's not like what it was like in the past. You know, when you met somebody who had the same idea as you in some, you know, whatever. This is strong, this stuff. Yeah. On that note, Stefan, I think that's a great, all right. Point to close on a positive. Yeah, that was a fantastic talking to you, man, Chris. Well, fantastic, yeah. What a great guy you are. I think you are a fantastic guy. Ah, yeah. oh, that is so kind you say that, but yeah. I'm really not. I'm just a product of like this wonderful life, you know. Um <laughs> I say we're all carbon molecules, you know. So, yeah, I'm a, so yeah I think I think you're you're like me, you know. I I I don't handle compliments very well. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just that, you know, I'm only human too, and probably like a lot of what I've done, what what you might call achievements in this world, it's like I've done it for the wrong reason, you know. I went into the military for the wrong reason. Someone bet me I, I couldn't join the Marines. And I was like, fuck you, I can. <laughs> so, you know, I, I did it to prove, you know, I stuck at it. Even when it was really, really hard, I stuck there because I couldn't let my parents see me fail because they both threw me out of home when I was a kid, you know. I was, like, homeless for the second time, I think, at 17. First time at 15 wandering the streets in my school uniform. That was fun. Uh, you know, so I joined the military. Like I, I did all the substance misuse or use or whatever we're going to call it. I, I just, yeah. you know, trying to find answers and, and whatever. But so it's very kind you say so. I, re I really appreciate it. That is really kind you say that. But it's so nice to meet you and, and to... Um, you know, you came on my show as my guest and you've asked me more questions than I've asked you. And I think that's great. <laughs> kind, kind of you. But oh, it yeah. was great talking to you. I enjoyed it very, very much. So uh, thank yes. you very much for, for doing the work. No problem. And if you want to have another chat again and, um, you know, you put this video on your channel, I'll put it on mine or whatever, whatever works. That's that would be really kind. Yeah, of course. I will post this on, on my channel, of course. Yes. I know, I know my viewers will like this. Yes, we'll give my massive love to Sweden. Um, I, I, I've just had such a great time all over Scandinavia, but particularly um, in, in Sweden. Um, yes, I'm... I'm thinking of many many good times um i think i slept in a judo gymnasium in malma one night when i was raising money to to go and work in africa um it's uh it, the uh, carly's caviar ah oh. that's the best one i wish we could get it here <laughs> yeah it's pretty good yeah ah uh, carly's caviar you can have that on anything <laughs> Yeah, it's good. Yes. It's good. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. So anyway, it was uh, great talking to you. Yes. I would, I would love to do it anytime again soon. Uh, otherwise, I hope you have a great time, that you're doing well, that you, that you get your, the appreciation that you deserve, and that we are 
that, that we will do well, you know, all of us. Yes, we will. We're getting there. We're all yeah. we're on an, an incredible journey, and it's going in the right direction for each and every one of us, even when it doesn't seem like it is. <laughs> That's right. Brilliant. Let me Bye. just uh, stop this recording. I'll say to my audience, massive love to you all. If you can like and subscribe, that would be great. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this chat as much as I have, and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>